All right, so Dr. Mobi, I'm back. So we talked about obscenization and complement fixation. So let's see very quickly obscenization. What immunoglobulins perform? Obscenins are obscenins. IgG direct plus indirect. IgM indirect only. And IgA no, D no, E no. Then complement fixation. So of course the indirect means complement fixation. So there are just two IgM and GM. So GM makes classic cars. So complement fixation, IgG yes, IgM yes. A, E, they know. And it's very simple. Look, D is useless, out. E is sitting on the mast cell. And it is sitting on the mast cell with the FC portion. So why would it fix the complement? And A is standing on the mucosal membranes. We don't need the membrane attack complexes there to kill our own cells. It just sits there and hand, handles the immunoglobe uh, antigens. So really G and M are actually fighting the pathogens. So they both can actually activate the complement. So now active and passive immunity. Let's talk about that very quickly. This is part of the... Um, Active and passive immunity is part of uh, vaccinations as well, so we'll talk there too. But here, active immunity means a person got exposed to an antigen and created his or her own immunoglobulins. So let's talk about that and let's move our story forward. When the pathogen came in, you saw that alternate pathway and you saw that menon, menon binding lectin pathway of complement fixation became active. Meanwhile, when the pathogen got broken up by neutrophils, by macrophages, and by the complement fixation, the pathogen pieces became available in the serum. These pieces were washed out from the interstitium through the lymphatics and went into the lymph node. Inside the lymph node are sitting the B cells. These B cells, so let's say there is a B cell here, So let's say there is a B cell here. So this is a lymph node. And there is a B cell here that has gotten IgG, IgD, and IgM as receptors. So, so if somebody asks you what are the B cell receptors, IgD and IgM are B cell receptors for the B cells that are naive. IgG. So this is a USMLE question and IgG is a receptor on a memory B cell. A B cell that has class switched and has become a memory B cell for the re-exposure to the same antigen. That B cell has gotten IgG on its surface as a receptor. So remember IgG can act as a receptor to no book says that but USMLE asks it. Well I'm sure that some books say it. Uh, so IgD and IgM are present here. The pathogen comes and binds, let's say the proteins from pathogens bound here, or glycoproteins. When they bound there, now we need the class switching to occur inside the B cell. And the B cell is now going to become a plasma cell. What is a plasma cell? It is an active B cell that is making aminoglobulins. So remember the helper cells came and they helped as well. The end result is, that the B cell that has become a plasma cell would start releasing. This has become a plasma cell now. So this is a big nucleus and it is making immunoglobulins. These immunoglobulins will be released. So what are the kind of immunoglobulins that are going to be released in this B cell? We are going to get IgM, we are going to get IgG, we are going to get IgA or E. D is never released. However, this process of getting the antigen, understanding the breaking up the antigen, getting the antigen into the lymph node, understanding the kind of antigen, activating the B cell, asking the B cell to make the immunoglobulins, opening up the DNA, creating messenger RNA, it takes time. Just messenger RNA coming out and then starting to make proteins can take two or three days. So here, 
after the exposure, first exposure to the pathogen, this triangularly uh, squarey pathogen, it would take about 10 days for the immunoglobulins to become available. So if you go to a chemist and you say, you know what, I have this little disease, can you give me a medicine? And the chemist says, okay, I'll go home and I'll make it and come back in 10 days. It would take me 10 days to go and get me all the substances and all the things and make stuff. This is what this B cell is. It's a slow poke. It doesn't react very fast. So it says, give me 10 days. I will make aminoglobulins in 10 days. So the first response of aminoglobulins that comes out is in 10 days. And do you know the very first response that the B cell does? It has, remember, M, D, G, A. So M and D are already formed. So the first response is that it starts releasing IgM. That is why when we say that there is a primary immune response and a secondary immune response, the first exposure for the first time in our life to an antigen, B cell would release what? IgM, because that's the only immunoglobulin it can make. Then it would become class switched. We talked in our last lecture how the class switching occurs. So once it becomes class switched, it would then produce IgG. So what would happen is that the response immune response, immunoglobulin response would look like this. So if I have a graph here and this is the concentration and this is days. So first week, 10th day, so let's say 7 days, 10 days, oh, why not I make that here, 7 days, 10 days, 14 days, 21 days and so on. So these are weeks, I just want to have 10 days here. IgM starts appearing on the 10th day and then it peaks about two weeks and then it starts going down. This is on the first exposure. Then meanwhile IgG would start coming as well in two or three weeks you would see IgG coming up too and then it would start going down. So the very first exposure to any antigen for the first time in our life, IgM. Then after two, three, four weeks, IgG. So if you if if I am exposed to an antigen, or if you take my plasma and you see IgM of a particular type present, but no IgG for that antigen present, and you can do that by agglutination tests, you can easily say that Mubin is exposed to this pathogen for the first time. However, if you see IgG present, then you can say Mubin was exposed long enough to this pathogen. Or, so now here is the other thing. Once the pathogen is received and our body has taken 7-10 days to make immunoglobulins, these class switched B cells become memory cells they keep IgG on their surfaces and they go to sleep. Some of them, not all of them, some of them. Those become the memory B cells. If the pathogen attacks again, now of course the naive B cells will become active. So there will be IgM that would come. But those sleeping B cells with the IgG as a receptor on the surface will very quickly see that, oh man, this is a antigen of the type which we already know. And that cell has already class switched, right? So it already knows how to make IgG. So it would immediately start making IgG. So what would happen is, in a re-exposure, in a re-exposure, so that may be, I got re-exposed to the same pathogen after six months. In a re-exposure, there will be IgM created, so same day, seven, 10, 14, 21, and so on. IgM's behavior is still going to be the same, about peaking about 10 days and going down. Why? Because there are still new B cells that are exposed to that antigen for the first time in their life. So please remember this as a student and as a doctor, as a paramedic. It is not necessary that when an antigen comes, all the B cell become exposed to all of the antigen right away. Some B cells are still sitting. Number one. Number two, bone marrow is making more B cells all the time. So there are always going to be the naive B cell present for the same antigen. So they would behave the same way as they behaved the first time. However, 
there are sleeping B cells, sleeping beauties. These have gotten G on them, IgG as a receptor. So these sleeping beauties, when they get the antigen, so they, they are funny, it's like the sleeping beauty, you know, the story where the, the, the prince comes and kisses her and she wakes up. So this sleeping beauty, uh, if I can look like a sleeping beauty, so the sleeping beauty is sleeping with the IgG receptor exposed and she's hoping that somebody would come and kiss and she would wake up. That is IgG receptor, although memory B cells have IgM receptors too, but IgG receptor when present on the surface of B cell activates the B cell much faster than IgM. So that is a trick here, that is the important thing to note here. So what happens now is that this sleeping beauty guy or girl, so let me see if I can make a sleeping beauty B cell. So she's sleeping and she has exposed IgG. She has IgM, she has IgD, but now she has IgG as well. As soon as the same antigen is presented again, so this is three months later, Mobin got exposed to the same pathogen. Now there were sleeping beauties present, the B cells, sleeping memory B cells. When they got this, they would wake up. They are already class switched. They already know how to make IgG. So what are they going to make? IgM? No. IgD? No. They will make I, IgD? No. IgM? No. They will make IgG. So immediately, immediately, we'll start having, let me make IgD. Immediately, we'll start having IgG. So this is the funny thing about the secondary, this is called the primary response. Nothing, uh, students sometimes become so confused that what is the primary response or sec nothing. If you remember it this way, primary response is the immune response by a naive B cell. It takes 7 to 10 days to manufacture the immunoglobulins and send them out. And the first immunoglobulin a B cell makes is IgM and IgD. Then it does a class switching and makes IgG. So this is the IgM, then it class switched here and made IgD. So of course, oh, why do I say IgD? IgG, IgM. Here the class switching occurred. So that is the first exposure, first response, primary response. Then this beauty, the class switched B cell went to sleep. Two months later, Mubin got infected again. This time, there were naive cells which are going to do the same IgM thing, but there is this B cell which is sleeping, it's going to create the IgG ramp immediately. So what is the benefit? This time, even before Mubin felt the symptoms, here, Mubin felt the system of, uh, symptoms for 7, 10 days. You know, sometimes we are infected and we have got flu or we got something to say, well, I'm going to wait for it to finish and the immune system to take care of it. For 7 days, 2 weeks, what is happening? The immune system is trying to prepare to handle it. Here, within one day or two days, Mubin might not even know that I got re-exposed because the antigens came rapidly from the sleeping memory B cells and they took care of it. And what is the primary type of that antigen? IgG. So now if you take blood from Mubin in two months, Mubin had no symptoms. He just came for your you know, general physical examination and you said, okay Mubin, give us your blood. And you took the blood and you saw a lot of IgG to a particular antigen and small IgM, you can say two things now. Number one, Mubin is, was exposed to this antigen previously and this is a re-exposure, secondary response. Or you can say Mubin is being exposed to this antigen continuously for a long time, enough long, maybe three, four weeks that now he's gotten the dominant IgG type. Why IgG type? Because the B cells have class switched from IgM and now they're making IgG. B cell do that. First they make IgM, then they class switch to IgG, then they class switch to IgA. So they protect, first of all they create receptors, then they create pentamers to take care of the major bulk mass of the pathogens, then they make IgGs to continuously you know, go to placenta and take care of the baby as well, then they make IgA to, take, to create surface protection against that pathogen in future. So in future we are not even going to open the door for the pathogen, right? So IgM is necessary to handle the initial mass, initial attack. 
IgG is necessary to protect the baby as well. IgA is necessary to create the guards or train the guards on the on the surfaces so future attack is prevented. But if the future attack does occur, then IgG would come very fast and take care of the stuff and the baby would be also be protected. So that is the primary and secondary response. So here we were talking about the uh, active passive uh, immunity. So well, let, let's go back. I actually have covered primary and secondary response that is somewhere over here, here. So I've covered here, IgM is primary and IgG is secondary response. None other, although IgA will come as part of the class switching as well, but it does not attack as a primary or secondary. Now, um, active and passive immunity. So when our body makes, when our body makes immunoglobulin for the first time or by exposure directly, that is called active immunity. However, in some cases, our body, we cannot wait for 10 days, a patient would die, maybe tetanus or diphtheria or something like that. And you are saying, okay, you know what, I'm going to wait for 10 days for this body to make immunoglobulins. No. So in that particular case, you give him immunoglobulins that are made in something else, another human, a horse, a mouse. In, in uh, hybridomas or in, in synthesized through bacteria and viruses, you give him antigen anti antibodies right away so that these can go and clear the the toxins present in the body. So that will be passive immunity. Passive immunity is a very common USMLE question that what kind of vaccine is passive and what is active? One and secondly, what is the difference of active and passive? The difference is that when you give passive. That would, that would finish in a couple of weeks. It would take care of the, it is coming from someone else, our body doesn't know how to make it and I received it from another animal or from a laboratory and it took care of the antigen and then it would be uh, washed out of our body. So passive immunity immunoglobulins will be cleared out in a couple of weeks. Active immunoglobulins will be formed in a couple of weeks and they would stay there for a couple of months and then for re-exposure they would be uh, available. Passive immunity that does not create memory B cells because we are giving immunoglobulins directly we are not creating memory B cells which know how to make them. So if you are re-exposed before our body knows how to work with it you are at risk again. So uh, what, are, what is the role of the booster doses? The role of the booster dose is this that this again is a USMLE question and very important for doctors to know. Role of the booster doses to actually create affinity maturation we talked about affinity maturation in our last lecture. Affinity matur maturation or somatic hypermutation. What that is is that B cells and their receptors that is IgM and IgD and IgG in case of memory. But we are talking IgM and IgD. B cells keep needing to make their receptors better and better. To do that there are follicular dendritic cells that hold the antigen and antibody complexes in their hand and they offer them to B cell so that the B cell receptors can try to understand how to work with them better. So that is called somatic hypermutation and affinity maturation. So the um, booster doses are given to create affinity maturation. We give doses of antigen so B cell can keep practicing how to handle this and become fine and fine. So that is the active passive and uh, immunity boosters. So of course IgG, IgM, IgA can be given. Transplacental passage, let's very quickly handle that. IgG, yes. Why does it go through the placenta? Because it is very small. How does it go through the placenta? The FC portion of the IgG can act, attach with the placenta and the cells would then engulf it and the IgG will be sent to the baby. So mother actually protects the baby uh, in the womb by the transplacental um, route. So transplacental passage IgG, yes, none of the others are going. So you can actually say once a baby is born, he or she has mother's IgGs, protected from most of the infections around because he is in the same environment where the mother is. So he is going to be exposed to similar pathogens that mother is exposed to. So he is protected. However, mother would also offer the claustrum or secretory component so that is here. So let's do that. So IgA 
Where is IgA? IgA is present in secretions. Not IgG, nothing else. This is not only present in secretions. Clostrum is a kind of a secretion 